Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. Before we begin this week's test drive, I'd like to answer a letter we got from Dana Oak of Gander, Newfoundland. Dana was asking why I don't use a crash helmet during skid pan testing. Basically, I don't push the cards hard enough or fast enough to warrant the use of one. However, when we go track testing, we certainly do use a crash helmet. Dana, thanks for your letter. Now to this week's test drive. We're looking at the 1990 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme four-door. This is the car that will spearhead GM's thrust to recapture some of the prestigious mid-size market. During the brake test, I had to apply an incredible amount of pressure to the brake pedal to stop the car. In fact, at times, I wonder if I were going to have to use both feet. Now, this is not the first GM product I've tested that has shown this worrying trait. It also accounts for the lengthy stopping distances. The 3100 V6 in our test car proved to be a very lively performer. We turned in sprint times of around 9 seconds, which for a family sedan is great. The dramatic change in weather conditions encountered at the skid pad renewed my respect for the Eagle GT Plus 4s fitted to our test supreme. During the pylon test, both the tyres and the suspension put on a good showing. However, on the downside, I felt the whole setup was a little too stiff for a family sedan. A four-door should be more compliant. From a driver's perspective, the Supreme is either a delight or a nightmare. I found the digital configuration of the dash a little overpowering and some of the information contained on the driver information center useless to say the least. On the positive side, if you have the patience, the myriad buttons that control the 16-way power seat can be used to set the seat to near perfection. A couple of things form this week's pet peeve. Firstly, the size and location of the trunk hinges. Unless you put your luggage in carefully, the hinges will damage the luggage, and they also cut into what would have been a very roomy trunk. The second and more important part of my peeve is the extensive use of inexpensive plastics throughout the interior. It disappointed me somewhat. Anyway, now to the scoreboard and see how I rated the rest of the 1990 GM10. Despite the inclement weather conditions, the Supreme handled itself very well on the skid pad. On the highway, though, it could do with a massage to relieve some of the stiffness. We accomplished the 100K mark in just under 10 seconds, which is generally an inspired performance. The brakes left a lot to be desired. Despite having discs all round, the best we managed in the brake test was a lengthy 124 feet. There was some wind noise evident at highway speeds, and unless you appreciate a raspy exhaust note, you'll find the car generally noisy. We averaged 10.9 litres per 100 kilometres, or 26 miles per gallon. Commendable, given the very sprightly performance offered by the engine. Conclusion. Despite my criticisms, I still enjoyed driving the Cutlass Supreme, and I think that with some refinements, this car will mount a serious challenge, especially as the competitors have had a few years without any serious competition.